Nobody in construction hires somebody because they're great at speaking up. You get hired because you're great at working. You got a strong back, you got strong arms, you got a good work ethic, you're honest, you're, you're perfect for construction. You're not necessarily really great at speaking up. It's not a requirement, all right? So plenty of, of us in construction aren't great at speaking up. How are you doing at speaking up respectfully when it needs to happen, especially in the interest of safety? That is hard to do, to know when to do it or how to do it. A lot of guys think, I'm not going to open that can of worms. I've done plenty of fishing and I don't want to open a can of worms either. God knows it's going to stink. And they'll say, you know, don't wake a sleeping dog. That guy's got a bad temper. You know, don't bug him. I understand that. And some of us want to just sweep it under the rug. You know, just pretend it doesn't exist or it doesn't happen. We don't want to speak up. It's too risky for lots of reasons. And I understand that too. Uh, years ago, when I was in the seminary, I had a chance to live in Kenya for 18 months. And it was a poor part of Nairobi, and there was some street violence. And there was one time where a person had been killed in my neighborhood, beaten and killed. And the next week, there was another fight in the market. Some guy who had been drinking got in a fight with the shoemaker. Maybe he made a mistake on his shoes. Maybe the guy who had been drinking was just mad. But they got in a pretty violent fight, and a crowd gathered to watch. And two Kenyans fighting, one who had been drinking, one who hadn't. Definitely had the advantage uh, going to the shoemaker. I was watching, and the only white guy there, right? And I watched the guy who had been drinking pick up a good-sized stone, about this big. And he was, he was intending to hit the shoemaker with the stone, and he went like this over his head. Right when he did that, I was, I was, as I saw him pick the stone up, I thought, this other guy had been killed by a stone. I thought, I can't watch him. I thought he's going to miss the shoemaker. Shoemaker's going to grab the stone and kill him. That's what I thought could easily happen. So when, the, when, he went to, when he went to throw it at the shoemaker, I grabbed it out of his hands. Well, he was not happy with that at all. So he came around and he took a swing at me. I ducked. He landed on my back. I stood up. He flipped off and landed in the mud puddle. <laughs> It was classic. It was unbelievable. The people thought this was great. They were laughing. They were enjoying that show. This, they're like, this is a good show. So uh, I ran. And if there's one thing you don't want, it's to be chased by a Kenyan. <laughs> I'm, I look like a distance runner, but I'm not. So fortunately, he had been drinking just enough that he did not catch me. So I got away. But interrupting is risky, right? Whether it's a guy who's going to try to hurt a guy with a stone or whether it's a guy who takes a shortcut on using a piece of power equipment or whether it's a guy who doesn't wear his proper PPE or a guy who has not been trained on a demo saw or some other piece of equipment and, and you pretend nothing happened, you look the other way because you don't want to interrupt him. It's risky, right? There's reasons. There's real reasons why we don't speak up, why people don't speak up. Some people are afraid of looking foolish. That's a very common one. Lots of people are afraid of looking foolish and speaking up and being wrong. Some are afraid of an unhappy verbal exchange, that there'll be a fight, that'll be a, at least a verbal fight, all right? Some are concerned about retaliation that they're going to get me back, they're going to give me the bad job for the next 10 years. And that happens. And there's other reasons, too, why we don't speak up. It's not easy. I know of a company in Denver. I know the safety director well. I knew him years ago and called him occasionally to ask if he wanted to do the demo saw safety that I did so much of. And he said he, said he didn't really think they needed it. They hadn't had an injury. The guys seemed to know what they were doing. There's plenty of other things to train on, as we all know. And then one day I got the emergency call. Tom, we need you out here now. We had a, we had a serious injury. And this was a guy who was cutting a 30-inch concrete pipe on the ground near a hole in a fashion where the saw was above his shoulders. 
and the guy who did the cutting was actually the excavator driver. Now, probably the top ranking guy on that job site is the excavator driver. And I don't know his experience level, but I do know what happened. He's cutting this 30 inch concrete pipe, fairly substantial pipe, got to the pinch point, and it pinched on the saw, kicked the saw back out of his hands, landed on the ground, rolled over his right boot, almost cut this guy's foot in half. Very serious injury, very expensive, very painful and very serious injury. And preventable, completely preventable, right? How? Well, we all know that when a, a tool is above our shoulders, we don't have the leverage. And pretty much everyone I work with knows that's not a safe behavior. So any one of those six or seven or eight guys that were walking around that job site that day could have stopped him, could have intervened. If they had a high trust, high accountability, safety culture, they would have intervened and would have found a way to persuade him to put that saw down or find a different way to make that same cut, a safer way. It could have been avoided. Now when I do this seminar live, right now we would do a little um, example, a little simulation of this incident. And one person would have the saw, one person would be coming up to interrupt him, and one person would be coaching the interrupter. Because the interrupter needs support. It's not easy to do, right? And I always ask him to do it three different levels. First level, I ask the saw man to have total compliance. Just put the saw down and say, you're right, I'm, it's dangerous, I'll do it the safe way. Second time, a bit of resistance. The third time, a lot of resistance. And then the question is, how do you get his attention? How do you handle the resistance? And how can you escalate to get that guy to actually safely stop the procedure he's doing? Not easy. Not easy, but worth thinking about. And the language is so important. The actual words matter, right? Some of us wrestle with getting the right words.